So folks, I'm sure you've noticed, as well as I have, that lately old Donnie is having more and more middle of the night freakouts and meltdowns, whatever you want to call them. Just posting up an absolute frenzy of BS all over True Social and all of that. And right now he had one at 4 a.m. last night. And it's connected to his all day meltdown yesterday, where among other things, he literally called for the constitution to be torn apart so that he could be reinstalled into power. So we have to talk a little bit about that. Talk about what that, what that was, what he was saying, the reaction to it, but then also how he continued that absolutely fascistic rant into the night showing a man that is losing it that is desperate that is afraid of going to prison that is afraid of dying in prison and sees only a fascist takeover of the country as his way back into power but i want you to listen to some of these reactions because they're very important but across the board the reaction to this should be outrage republican democrat no matter who you are Absolutely. The former president is calling for the suspension of the Constitution and the end of the rule of law. And look, Yasmin, not all of the responsibility here belongs with the criminal justice system, although ultimately it will be up to prosecutors to hold Trump accountable. A lot of the responsibility for this, I, I don't even want to give it the decency of calling it a comment, what, whatever it is, this sort of fanciful criminal speculation responsibility for this begins with the Republican Party. He's still technically their leader. Every Republican in Congress needs to denounce these comments and to say that they do not agree that the rule of law should be suspended in this country. Like, I think this is this is a big deal, right? This is where we're at. And we're here because of people like Trump and because of his enablers. If these people hadn't enabled him for four years, you wouldn't have a former president, an absolute maniac, still screaming about the 2020 election and still screaming about ripping and tearing up the Constitution to try and get back in to power. It's not going to happen, but like this is who he is. Listen to this. It's like Donald Trump admitting we were right all along. That's not actually going to happen. And nobody <laughs> really takes this seriously. Uh, Donald Trump is not going to be installed as president of the United States, but what's fascinating. No, but even the relitigation is, part of it, like even yeah, just none revisiting. Of it, none, of it, none of it's going to happen. It will, it will not happen. The 2020 election was decided fairly. Uh, pretty much anybody who's uh, who's serious uh, acknowledges that um, Republicans would like Donald Trump to stop talking about it. I, I shouldn't say all Republicans, but I would say most leading Republican Party officials would like Donald Trump to stop talking about it. They think that it has not only been embarrassing, but has hurt their party uh, as evidenced by these recent midterm elections uh, in which Republicans were expected to have a big wave and ended up having a little ripple. Um, you know, going beyond that, Yasmin, you put up that Truth Social post yeah. for uh, for about half a dozen years now. Democrats and even some Republicans have said uh, that Donald Trump wanted to get rid of some of the Constitution. That he wanted to ignore it or rip up parts of the Constitution. And here is Donald Trump saying, "Hold my beer. I would like to get rid of the whole damn thing." Um, you know, so he is. <laughs> He is just openly admitting what they've been accusing him of of years for years, and um, you know it's it's hard to see how um, Republican members of Congress will go along with that, uh, or other Republican officials will go along with the idea of just dispensing with the Constitution. <laughs> Like, in a sense, you have to laugh a little bit. You're on the knife's edge here of this dude's a literal fascist and it's terrifying, but also it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's literally like a three-year-old who just lost the game and is like, because of some rule they made up at the end, they get to redo it, except the three-year-old is now like seven years old and they're still complaining about that game from when they were three and all of that. It's, it's absolutely asinine, but but it's who Trump is like we've been calling him a fascist for a long time now we've been calling him a wannabe totalitarian for a long time now and Trump and many of his allies have been saying that slander or that's exaggeration or you're just saying that because you don't like him it's Trump derangement syndrome blah 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 when in reality we were right the entire time 100 percent 
right the entire time on this. And then it gets even worse because a legal expert explains that while the DOJ might not be using this as a main piece of evidence against them, it's likely contextual. Right. And Ellie, I want to ask you about some new reporting uh, just coming into our newsroom. Uh, Trump is calling for the termination of the Constitution uh, to overturn the 2020 election and put him back in power. Uh, The White House is now condemning him for this. Um, obviously, this is just more desperation from from the former president. It's, it's not going to happen. What is your reaction to that? And, and I guess what might the Justice Department think of that when you go out there and you say this sort of thing as they're perhaps weighing making a case against him? Good Lord, uh, I don't even know where to begin. I, I mean, yeah. I guess I'll just summarize in response to Donald Trump's statement to say that virtually every word of that statement is wrong, crazy and dangerous. I mean, the only accurate thing Donald Trump says is that to do what he's recommending would require termination of the Constitution, which of course would leave us without a democracy. I don't think DOJ is paying any attention to this. You don't, sometimes you just have to sort of look past the hoopla and just focus on the facts and the law that are relevant to a crime. So I think DOJ prosecutors are looking at this statement, probably rolling their eyes or or feeling some sense of disgust and just ignoring it putting it in file 13 where it belongs. But I mean, it does underline once again his hostility to uh, American way of life and democracy in this country. And it's a reminder of what the country was going through uh, around January 6th, just a few days before these midterms, uh, or excuse me, this this runoff coming after the midterms. Um, Ellie, let me ask. So you can see what he's saying, right? Like this can be connected to the cases. Yeah, it's not going to be a main thing. The DOJ has got more important things to deal with. But when you're talking about a man who launched a fascist coup or may have launched a fascist coup because the DOJ is, you know, dealing with the law here where I guess you have to convict him, you know, but if you're arguing that this man is someone that would do unconstitutional things, do things that break the law to maintain his power, and then you have him post on his own website that he's willing to tear up the Constitution to get back into power, that's a pretty good circumstantial piece of evidence that the man has the mindset and the will and the ability, if he ever gets back into power again, and he did have the potential ability when he was in power, to actually make some of these things happen. So a man that says he's willing to terminate the Constitution is a man that's willing to use violence to achieve that end and is a man willing to, among other things, say, steal things from the federal government that don't belong to him. That a man that's willing to terminate the Constitution likely doesn't care about the proper ownership of classified and public documents. Like, it makes it makes a lot of sense. But this part is critical right here. And this is the part that might be the most damning for Trump. Because while this is bad for him, it's not generating as much attention as it used to because he's growingly meaningless. About uh, what happened today, former President Donald Trump, who recently announced his 2024 candidacy, just called for the termination of the Constitution to overturn the 2020 election, says it should be suspended. You've been very vocal about Trump and election denialism. This may be the farthest he has gone yet. What do you say to this, Gabriel? Pamela, I, I was having a really good day enjoy, enjoying my Georgia Bulldogs winning SEC championship. I hadn't seen that yet. And it's ridiculous. It's insane. It's just to suspend the Constitution. Come on, man. Seriously? I mean, if you want to be president of the Constitution, you don't say suspend the Constitution. It's just, it's this continuous level of more and more outrageous comments just to try to keep the, the anger alive. It's just, it's not helpful. It's not going to help his candidacy, and I, and I think that it's just the wrong direction to go, and I think more and more Republicans and Americans are saying, okay, I'm, I'm good, I'm done with this now, I'm going to move on to the next thing. Yeah, and he's still spewing those, those lies about um, what he says was election fraud, which doesn't is, exist. How is that factoring into the landscape there um, with, with people and how they're viewing the, the election there in Georgia? Well, frankly, it has had essentially no impact. The biggest impact I see is occasionally some bots on Twitter. Outside of that, it's not having any real impact at all. Um, in fact, as you can see, Herschel, Herschel is giving him the Heisman maneuver to say, stay away from Georgia because he knows if President Trump comes, he tanks his candidacy. So I just don't think that we're going to, it's not having any real impact on the ground here in Georgia anymore. And we saw that with both the primary wins where all the Trump endorsed candidates got spanked and not a little bit, but crushed. And then the general, when, when all the Republicans, with the exception of Herschel, who was a Trump-endorsed candidate, 
won outright. Now, this is a fight for the Senate race, so every vote's going to count. And I encourage every Georgian who wants to have their voice heard, come out and make your vote. So do your vote on Tuesday. And I about guarantee there won't be any lines because we've had so many people vote already. And we'll have 2,700 polling locations open. Right? Like, he doesn't matter as much anymore. And I think to a certain degree, that's a Republican trying to isolate his own party a little bit. Again, I think even a lot of moderate Republicans, let's be honest, they deserve a lot of blame here because even the people like the Cheneys and stuff, they didn't really start going after Trump until J6 and the big lie. And going into that 2020 election, after we knew Donald Trump did four years of evil, they were sort of still sticking by him, even if only tentatively. But the point is, guys, it's sort of true that this isn't having the effect that Trump might he might th think he had or wanted to have, but it is a sign of his growing fascism. And that's why he's flipping out. Donald Trump, it's almost like he, he put this out and he got some reaction, but he didn't get the reaction he wanted. He didn't get the positive reaction from his Republicans that he wanted, and he didn't get as much of a negative reaction as he's used to getting. So he dr doubled and tripled and quadrupled down at four in the morning, two, three, four in the morning. There was a bunch of posts last night all about this because he was absolutely devastated by the fact that he's going to prison if he doesn't find a way to get back into the White House. And it says here, writing on his true social website, Trump again expressed rage at his loss in the 2020 election, which he still maintains was falsely stolen from him. The world is laughing at the United States and its corrupt rigged presidential election of 2020. In an all caps follow up post, he wrote unprecedented fraud requires unprecedented cure. And it notes that he said the unprecedented cure would be the termination of all rules, regulations and articles even those found in the Constitution. And in a final post, Trump attacked Republicans who voted to certify Joe Biden's presidential win in 2020 when he says, I wonder what which Mitch McConnell, the rhinos, and all of the weak Republicans who couldn't get the presidential 20, uh, 2020 election approved and out of the way fast enough are thinking now. They are a disgrace to our great party and to our nation, which has become a laughing stock all over the world. This man is gone. He's absolutely gone, guys. And rightfully so. He is a monster. People are turning on him. He is a fascistic threat. Don't get me wrong, but he's also a giant laughingstock and he's on the knife's edge between danger and irrelevancy. And he doesn't like that. He would rather be a fascist dictator than an irrelevant loser. And that's the direction he's trying to go in. So he's going to post these 4 a.m. rants, but make no mistake. His power is waning. His influence is waning. And that makes him dangerous, but it also makes him a lot, lot closer to that orange jumpsuit that we all want to see him in.